Ross Simmons. It's your time. What's going on, folks? Super excited to be here. Um, throughout this, feel free if you need to get re-energized and throw back some calories. I will not be offended if you get up to get some cake. If you need more caffeine, I will also not be offended if you have to get up and go get some coffee. It is all good. As a Canadian, I am very chill. I am very chill with the idea that you might have to stand up and do some of those things. So by all means, feel free to do so. Uh, super excited to be here. Um, today, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. Um, I love talking to folks who are early in figuring out their career, folks who are going through a transition period in their career, trying to figure out what's next for them in their career, their life, their business, et cetera. So I'm super excited to be here. And what I wanna talk about today is how to build momentum and create an advantage online so you can thrive. Um, we're gonna get into a lot of different things, ranging from marketing to entrepreneurship. I'm gonna share some stories around my own growth and how I was able to build my brand. I'm gonna share with you some techniques that I've used to work with some of the largest companies in the world, ranging from the MailChimps of the world, the Canvas of the world, the, um, all kinds of companies out there around the globe, and how I was able to do that all while staying here in Nova Scotia and being able to travel around the globe to do what I love, which is to connect with marketers, connect with founders, entrepreneurs, who are creating things that are ultimately going to shape and change the way that people work. Um, I have come to this conference a handful of times over the years. I love it because I oftentimes find my next star higher, so I am excited to be here for that crucial reason as well. If at any point over the next few months, years, etc., you have questions about social media, you have questions about marketing, online, entrepreneurship, etc., please feel free to send me a note, slide in the DMs. I am very easy to find online, happy to chat with you. But today, we're here to talk about marketing. We're here to talk about growth, we're talking about entrepreneurship, and a whole bunch of other things that I truly do love. But there is a few things, if we were to rewind back in time, that I loved just as much as marketing. Those things were pieces of Pogs. I don't know if anybody remember Pogs. Did anyone grow up in Pogs era? Okay, Pogs were like these little things that you could throw around, capture the flag. That was my jam back in the day. Super Nintendo, also my jam, and Pizza Pockets. There was no better things than Pizza Pockets. As an adult though, you start to throw Pizza Pockets in. They don't taste the same. They definitely have less things in them. I used to think there was a ton of cheese. There's not a lot of cheese. I don't know if we're having shrinkflation or what, but they're definitely not putting as much cheese in the pizza pockets like they used to. But my favorite week when I was in school was the Scholastic Book Fair. Anybody remember this? Yeah? Unreal. Showed out to the Scholastic Book Fair. Still to this day, I wish I could go to the Scholastic Book Fair. There was no better feeling I can remember uh, when I was probably like six years old. I was always very entrepreneurial minded. I went to my parents and I asked if I could get like an advance on my allowance and I would work and I would clean the tub, I would vacuum, I would do all the things if I could get an advance just so I could buy the latest R.L. Stein Goosebump books. Not sure if anybody's a fan of Goosebumps. Those are still hold high quality. Um, but yeah, Scholastic Book Fair, there was no better day of the week. I loved it. It was probably for parents very painful because their kids always ask for all of the things. And you remember they used to have those erasers that like were shaped like things. Now we just got these basic erasers that are just like squares. I wish that we were still embracing the, the wild erasers that were like shaped like SpongeBob and stuff like that. But either way, best week of my life, but I hated these. Anyone remember these magic eye books? I hated them. I still hate them to this day. There's nothing in the world that makes me more frustrated. If you don't know what they are, what you do is you can look at this thing and you squint your eyes a little bit. And if you squint your eyes, you will be able to see Minnie Mouse and Goofy hanging out. Now just do it. Squint your eyes, look at that, and see if you can see it. You can't. I never could either. I couldn't do it. It sucked. All my friends would say, oh, I see Minnie Mouse. i say, shut up. It was brutal. I hated these books, but I love Waldo. Waldo was my jam. That was my homie. Me and Waldo go way back, and I still to this day love Waldo. There's no better book than Waldo. I can remember when I was probably like, I was old but childish. I was like 14 years old reading Waldo books, and it was like 2 a.m., and I 
ran in my parents' room. Mom, 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 I found him, I found him. Dad was like, boy, you better go to bed. <laughs> and, uh, so I stopped waking them up when I found Waldo. But there was no better feeling than finding Waldo in those books when it was late at night. Um, there was really no better feeling. And that feeling that I used to get as a young kid, that feeling of satisfaction of like actually struggling to like find Waldo and then find him is a feeling that I think all people should chase in their careers. We should always be looking for that moment of gratification to know that we've accomplished something, to know that we were able to get through a little bit of struggle, to get through a little bit of a challenge, and then on the other end of that, come out of it better. And that idea of chasing that and looking for that is something that I have consistently strove for in my career and when I try to figure out things. When you are going through life, when you are trying to figure out what is next, when you are debating between two different jobs, whether you're debating whether or not you should continue with your education or whether or not you should end it and just start going right into the workforce, you really do want to ask yourself if the decision that you're about to make is going to leave you feeling like you just found Waldo. I really do believe that. There is no better feeling in business than being able to do real business stuff, but still feel like a child in the sense that you are finding that Waldo moment every single day. There's no better feeling to grow up and get a, set up an e-commerce website and get notifications on your phone constantly while you're eating dinner that are saying that people are buying your product, that people are buying do-rags that you created on an e-commerce site when you were in high school. That was one of my first businesses or paying to read content that you're writing about fantasy sports. That was the first, my first forte into entrepreneurship when I was in university. I started a fantasy football blog and I was doing this in my parents' basement in East Preston and reaching people all over the globe. There's no better feeling. But those feelings can continue. When you launch a Shopify store and you start getting these notifications while you are like essentially sleeping, not doing work, to know that people are buying your products. There's no better feelings. Or you set up a YouTube channel, or maybe you set up a Twitch account, maybe you set up a TikTok account, whatever it may be, and you're getting thousands of people following you every single day. While you still are able to live life on your own terms, the way that you want to, and chase your own dreams, there is no better feeling. But to get there, you have to figure out what in the world should I do? What are the opportunities that I should actually chase? Why should I choose this over that? And what should I be thinking about before I make a decision to go into this world of marketing, into business, into tourism, into creating things online? How do you figure that out? A lot of people think that it's like this, and I was one of those people. When I was in university, I watched Mad Men, and I was like, I'm going into advertising. You just drink whiskey all day and come up with business ideas. Sounds amazing. You don't do it. It doesn't work out that way. And if you do, you're probably going to be really bad at your job, and it's a whole can of worms. But it's not like this. It's more like this. You sit in front of a computer, you hold your head, and you're like, oh, this is brutal. But it doesn't actually have to be, right? It can actually be a more seamless and linear process. And what I want to share with you today is the approach that I've applied not only to marketing campaigns that have brought Nestle products like Skinny Cow Ice Cream and Kit Kat Chunkies to Canada, but also the philosophies and the ideas that I've used to launch businesses and content that have reached millions of people all over the globe. It's a simple three-step process process. Research, rethink, remix. That's it. It's a very straightforward model. It's a very straightforward idea. Research, rethink, remix. Three R's. Because my name is Ross, I wanted to make sure that there was just a bunch of R's. It's my favorite letter. It's not anything sophisticated. But the concepts are very important. The first thing that you need to do before you figure out whether or not you should do something is start with research. What does that mean? If you're starting something from scratch, it means you have to find problems that people are already struggling with. You have to understand the problems that exist in the market. If you're trying to create content, you have to research what type of stories people will resonate with. What do people care about? You want to research those things, understand them, and you're gonna use that to inform the approach that you take. The next thing you wanna do is start to rethink the things that you learn. Think about a unique way that you can solve these problems. What is a unique way that you can approach your storytelling, your marketing, your communication efforts? You want to rethink it so it's not the exact same as what everybody else is doing. And then you want to remix it. And a remix is simple. 
A remix is simply taking inspiration from things that already exist and then finding unique spins to apply it to your own business, to your own life, to your own career. And I believe this is the key. If you know where you wanna be in 10 years, five years, 15 years, 20 years, the easiest path forward is to identify somebody who is there. Look at who that person is and start to reverse engineer, look backwards at the steps that they took to get there. And we are growing up and you folks are going through your life in one of the most fascinating times ever because you have access to these things like LinkedIn. And you can find somebody who is essentially in a position that you would want and then you can reverse engineer how they got there. What was their first job? Okay, so if I wanna break into this industry, maybe I should follow a similar career path. Oh, I want to start this type of a company. All right, so maybe I should reach out to someone who is in that space. You can find them on LinkedIn, you can find them on Google, all of these channels. Now, when I give this presentation, I tell people that they should remix ideas, that they should get inspiration from things that are out there. Some people will say, Ross, are you, are you, is that just copying what other people did? Like, where's the creativity in that? No, it's not copying. Copying is when you take somebody's art and you just like completely throw your logo on it. This happened to one of my companies, Hustle and Grind. We had this uh, poster that we created and it went massive, it made the front page of Reddit. It got a ton of engagement on social and people just started throwing their logo on it. This is not a remix. We created this slide presentation as well. It's called the Ultimate Guide to Instagram Marketing. We did this about four years ago and brands started throwing their logo on it. This is not a remix. Nope, 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 nope. That is not a remix. A remix is when you're simply taking inspiration from it. So if somebody would have saw that we created that piece and they took inspiration from it and they said, we're gonna create the ultimate guide to Snapchat or we're gonna create the ultimate guide to Be Real. This is the new app. How many people here are on Be Real? I need to see hands higher. This is like consumer research. Okay, cool, interesting. Has it already gone off today? I'm sorry for folks who don't know what I'm talking about, but has the Be Real thing already gone off? Okay. What? It goes out every hour? Fascinating. Oh, wow. Okay, so Be Real, if you're not familiar, is this weird app that people are using now that will essentially give you a notification when you have to take a picture and you have to be real, meaning you doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter what time of the day it is, you have to take a picture of what you can see and yourself. So it's like a selfie and it's real because it's what is happening. Either way, it's gonna take off, it sounds like it's taking off. Fast forward three years from now, come back to this video and you'll hear that I said it first. Um, <laughs> be real is something. Um, okay, but if you created, if the people who just put up their hand create, and this is again guaranteed, I know what I'm talking about, if you create a guide called the ultimate guide to marketing on Be Real, I can't write it because I don't know what it is. I don't really get it. But if you can do that, you're gonna get a lot of people who think that you know what you're talking about. Another tip, when I was in university, first graduated, this is completely not in my notes, this is not in my slide, but it's a great tip because this is what like opened my mind to the internet. I first graduated from university and I had a blog. I'll talk about that soon. It's called rosssimmons.com. I wrote this blog post. I couldn't get any job interviews locally. I didn't have anybody who could introduce me to ad agencies, et cetera was trying to break into the advertising industry. I wrote a book, I wrote a blog post. The blog post was 15 books that you need to read to get a job in advertising. Guess who didn't have a job in advertising? Me, <laughs> but I wrote this book, this blog post, and all the agencies started to reach out because wow, this guy really reads a lot and he's clearly an authority, so they started to give me interviews. So what I'm saying is, not fake it till you make it, but kind of, but at the same time, if you can do the work to actually understand things like be real and then educate people on that, massive opportunity. All right, let's talk about the philosophy that I actually came here to talk about. Research, rethink, remix. This is the philosophy and the approach that I truly think can change the way that your career goes, that your life goes, that your path goes, if you embrace it. It is rooted in these three simple steps. One, research. It is so important to do research. Rethink, be open to getting innovative and thinking differently. Remix. You notice that the most popular movies these days are all just spin-offs of movies that happened before. Lion King breaks all of the records because they throw Beyonce and Gambino in it when the movie is old. It's just a remix. You do this time and time again and you will consistently see that people are just people. If you can remix great ideas and then give it back to people with little improvements, you can win. So let's dive into this a little bit deeper. This is the framework that I use for creating and identifying new ideas. There's a goal that you have across each step. Research, you're trying to find pain points. 
When you're rethinking things, you're trying to find and rethink solutions for an existing gap. When it comes to the remix, you're trying to turn these things into something new. Then you have to start with questions that you ask yourself. Questions like, what are people struggling with today? You have to ask yourself, what solves this today? You have to ask yourself, what does success look like to me if I am successful in doing this thing? And then you have to start asking questions surrounding the how. How in the world can I solve this problem? How big is the problem? You have to start asking, how do people solve it today? And then you have to ask yourself, how can I grow? How scalable is this? Meaning, how many people can I impact? Then you're essentially going through the next steps to get to a point where you have identified an opportunity worth chasing and you feel like you just found Waldo. Research, rethink, remix. That model, that approach, apply to your life, your career, your business, the job that you might take in a few months, a few weeks, et cetera, will fundamentally change the way that you operate and exist in the world to find success. And a lot of people will say, yeah, but there's a ton of different things, like there's way too many ideas out there, like somebody already did it. You ever go down the oat milk aisle? You know how many brands have just started throwing out new ideas for oat milk? It all tastes the same except maybe once in a while you'll have like a variation with the new flavor, vanilla, chocolate, et cetera, but it's all oat milk and oats are oats. So you can see this and think quickly, wow, instead of me thinking to myself, yeah, somebody else already started a marketing company. Oh, somebody else already started a YouTube video talking about hair. Somebody already created a blog writing about what it's like to be a young person in today's market, blah, blah, blah. I, I can't do this. There's too many people trying to make makeup blogs or TikToks or whatever that is. That's all nonsense. It's just stories that we tell ourselves. Because in reality, when you apply your own perspective, your own background, your own opinions, your own specific experience that you've lived to a topic, it fundamentally is going to connect with a different group of people. If you can apply your own perspective, your own swagger, your own style to something that already exists, you can unlock some amazing returns. Research, rethink, remix. When I first got out of school, I heard somebody talk. And they were like, Ross, here's what I believe. I believe that you are what shows up when somebody Googles you. So I went home and I Googled myself. You wanna know what I found? I found a whole bunch of people that weren't me. And I was very upset. Because what that meant was that when I was meeting people, they would go home, they were like, oh, Ross Simmons, he was cool, let's Google him. And then they were finding Rick Ross, they were finding Gene Simmons. I think he's lost right now or something, but that's a different story. All kinds of things like Richard Simmons, like all of these, I, don't, I still don't know who this dude is in a tub and why he's in it, but like he still shows up once in a while. I don't know what his thing is with this tub, but this is what showed up when you Googled me. And I was like, I can't have that. So I decided to embrace that concept of research, rethink, remix. So I researched, how in the world do you start to show up on the internet? Oh, you need a website. That was crazy. <laughs> We're not in America, so we don't have to run. <laughs> but research, rethink, remix. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So I did this research and I was like, all right, what in the world is going on with this internet thing, this Google thing? So I learned I have to create a website. So I decided that I was gonna build my first website. Again, I was living in my parents' basement, drinking instant coffee, and I launched this website. I taught myself how to design, I taught myself how to code, all that stuff. So don't judge me for the way that this website looks. I told you I really jumped into this world because I saw Mad Men and was like inspired. But I created this website, rosssimmons.com, thoughts of a modern day ad man. My website today looks nothing like this. But at the time, I created this and I wrote that blog post that you see there that I mentioned earlier. And I was like, this is gonna help shift what shows up on Google when people search for me. Because that's what I wanted to do. And it started with me researching how people were able to do it. The insight was simple. The more things that you create on the internet, the more likelihood of you being able to influence what shows up. And I still to this day believe that we in this generation, folks who are growing up in the internet era, really do need to consider what shows up when you get Googles. Whether it's for job applications, whether it's for your own professional growth and development and where you wanna go, or if you meet somebody and they go and Google you after the club, you still wanna show up in Google and you wanna make sure that the message is what you actually want. You don't want it to be a piece of content or a 
video that you put up when you were 14, 18, or 16 that is embarrassing. You want it to be something that you actually are proud of and something that you can actually say, yep, I'm okay with how I'm showing up on the internet. So you want to create content that helps influence that. Another simple tip. My biggest advice to folks, and if there's one thing that you take from this, I hope it would be this, is to buy your own domain. First name, last name, dot com. If you have a very common name, sorry, you're in trouble, it's probably gone. But if you don't, and you can get it, you can probably buy for like 15 cents on GoDaddy or something like that. So first name, last name, dot com or dot CA, definitely buy it. And if you want to get really funny, buy your friend's domains and then sell it back to them. I did that once. <laughs> very fun to do. Um, so I started to create content online, and now if you Google me, I actually start to show up. All right, because I embraced that model. I researched how people started to show up on Google. I started to actually create content online, and now I own the search engine when somebody types Ross Simmons because I started to understand how this worked. It's not easy. You have to do the research. You have to actually be committed to investing the time and energy into learning, and it doesn't end after you have a diploma, a degree, etc. You continue to learn. Learning is a part of life if you want a good life. So with all of this, I also learned that there are three types of content that people actually want on the internet. And if you can give people these three types of content, you can build an audience. You can attract people to your stories. You can get people to follow you on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, you name it. And it's these three types, educate, engage, and entertain. Those are the three types of content, the three types of stories that you need to create if you want to build a following. So what does that mean? What is educational, engaging, and entertaining content? Now, when I talk about engage, educating content, you're typically thinking, oh, does that mean I need to give like a lecture? Does that mean I need to be overly scientific and informative? Not at all. You just have to provide people with information they didn't have before. When I talk about engaging content, you just need to create content that stirs up a dialogue. One of the easiest ways to do this is to put up a post on social media and ask people what they think. You do that, people start to respond, you start to have a dialogue, and that can be very powerful. You also wanna share entertaining content. Entertaining content is content that makes people laugh. If you scroll through TikTok, you'll see a ton of entertaining content every single day. That content, when shared, when distributed, ultimately puts smiles on people's face, makes them feel inspired, and it will hook people into wanting to subscribe, follow your content. Educational and entertaining and engaging content can fundamentally allow you to reach thousands of people. One of my other tips that I always recommend is that you try to be timely with your content. So when something is breaking news, when something is happening in the market and in the industry, you wanna be the first person to do it. So when Snapchat launched right away, I went online and I started to create content talking about Snapchat, talking about why this is something that marketers should invest in, why marketers should be thinking about it. And as a result, I started to see a ton of people viewing me as the top Snapchat marketer in the world. This is how you can embrace the idea of being reactive. If you can hear that stories are trending and you can create stories about them, you can win. A few years back, I was speaking at a real estate conference and it was in Nova Scotia. Um, does anybody know what Halifax's like, food is, like our special food? Donair, right. So when that actually broke as like an announcement, the internet was just like roaring in laughter, blah, blah, blah. And I was speaking at a real estate conference and I was like, look folks, Halifax just got announced as being, having Donair as the official food. You folks need to write blog posts about the best places outside of Halifax to get a Donair, homes on the market to buy that are close to a Donair shop. I told a room full of realtors that they should do this. No one in Halifax actually listened to me, but one person out of Edmonton did. He sent me a tweet. He said, Ross, I did it. I wrote this host is close to a, a Donair shop blog post and it broke the internet. He made it to the front page of Reddit. He had more traffic to his site ever. He did all of these things. So what I'm telling you is that I really hope you listen to what I'm telling you because I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Research, rethink, remix. I want to share a quick story again about the idea of reacting to um, things that are happening and creating content that's like educational. So early on in my career, I was actively producing content based off of things that were happening. Snapchat launches, I'm creating content about it. Instagram launches, I'm creating content about it. Anything that is new, I would create content about it. 
If there was a new video game, I would write about marketing lessons that you could learn from Grand Theft Auto, from all of these different things. And this content just took off. It got me featured in Forbes when I wrote a piece about lessons that you can learn from Jay-Z after he launched his Magna Carta album. I wrote this piece, Forbes reaches out, hey, can we cover this, blah, blah, blah. Of course you can. BET reaches out, they fly me down, they get me to speak at an event, and I start creating just a ton of attention off of the content I've created. This is where content really starts to show its power. That presentation right there, how to generate your first 20,000 followers on Instagram, has 1.5 million views on SlideShare today. One of those views was the person that was sitting at with me at this BET conference that I got flown down to and spoke at. And I'm talking to this gentleman and we're having a conversation. I'm like, great, this is awesome. We're talking about marketing, we're talking about growth. It was all smooth, it was all great. He was like, man, you look so familiar. I was like, mm, I'm on the internet, like maybe you saw me on there. He was like, yeah, but I, I feel like I like consumed your content and I really used it. I was like, maybe one of my presentations. He was like, yes, yes. I work at Combs Enterprises and I showed Mr. Combs how to use Instagram and Snapchat from your presentations. I was like, Mr. Combs, he was like, yeah, Puff Daddy, P Diddy, Diddy Diddy. I was like, what? <laughs> Drop the mic, right? So I taught Diddy how to use the internet. Um, or at least that's what I'm telling people. Um, but this is the opportunity that is in front of you. And again, folks, like remember, I'm just a kid from Preston here in Nova Scotia, reaching people all over the globe because I was able to embrace that idea of research, rethink, remix. It doesn't matter what your background's in. I was not a top student at school. You can embrace this model and unlock a ton of opportunity. And the reason why I'm so passionate about this stuff is because I truly do believe the internet can be a true equalizer as it relates to skills and as it relates to getting exposure and opportunity. So embrace it. Here's a fact that I want you to take to any company that you might join, because a lot of companies are still shying away from the idea of creating content. And it's this, organizations that blog get more traffic and more business than those that don't. So if you go to a company, and they're like, yeah, we don't have time for creating content. Well, ask them if they have time for making money. And they'll probably say yes. And if you can be the person that comes in and shows them that they can generate results on the back of content, you will forever be employed and be a highly valuable employee for those organizations. Content generates so many leads that it is unbelievable to think that we now have the opportunity, no matter where you live in the world, to actually reach millions of people. You are one email away, one tweet away, one piece of content, one YouTube video, one TikTok away from a completely different life. All you have to do is embrace that idea of research, rethink, remix. I've done this time and time again. Again, my website does not look like it used to. I might have to update it again because I grew a whole bunch of hair during COVID. But at the end of the day, like these are the things that happen over time. You are all going to evolve. You are all going to be different. You are going to find that the things that you think today are gonna to be completely different five years, 10 years from now. And that is a good thing, right? Like if you do not change your mind, if you continuously have the same opinions that you used to have 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you're not growing. So you constantly want to be challenging yourself to think differently and embracing this model of research, rethink, remix, it kind of forces you to do that. There are so many opportunities out there, folks. If you go on Facebook today, it's easy to get caught up in just the drama, the, the I just want to be entertained, but there's business opportunities there as well. I want you to understand that all of these channels that we typically use for entertainment can also be used for growth. I tell people all the time, your feed is what you make it. If you follow negativity, you're gonna get a lot of negativity. If you follow positivity, if you follow entrepreneurs, if you follow business leaders, if you follow people who are good at different things, you will be met with that content and it can fundamentally change the way that you think. We always talk about watching what we eat, we always talk about watching what we drink, et cetera, but we should also think about watching what we consume on the internet. So make sure that you are taking control of your feeds by joining groups that are related to business on things like Facebook, by following the right accounts on Instagram, making sure that you're not double tapping on videos that are ultimately gonna mess up your entire feed and just give you a constantly feed of negativity and drama. You want to take ownership of these things because there's opportunities that exist in there. You can go into these Facebook groups and I'm telling you, make a ton of money if you need a gig on the side. If I was just starting out, I'd go into these Facebook groups, I'd find a product and I would go in them and I would start selling them. The marketplace is an amazing opportunity. My first business was selling do-rags from my locker in high school. I then transitioned that to a website where I was able to sell do-rags online. 
These are the opportunities that you can have today at scale. I could only sell to the people that were in my high school. You can sell to anyone in Nova Scotia. You can sell to anyone in the globe. All you need to do is embrace that idea of research, rethink, remix. You can go to Google and you can get all kinds of information around what people want. The key is curiosity. The key is embracing this idea of research, rethink, remix. I encourage you to find communities online where you can start to study the things that they're sharing, the things that they're um, talking about. My audience is typically engineers, so I go into communities where engineers are spending time, I learn what type of content they want, I rethink it, I give it back to them, and we're able to break records with the amount of traffic that we're able to see in a single day. It's great, and it's because we embrace this philosophy. Research, rethink, remix. You do that consistently, and you can build essentially any business, any career, any type of content that you want that is gonna be likely to succeed especially if you lean on those three E's, educate, engage, and entertain. So what else can you do? I love to experiment with different things. For me, one of my early childhood goals was to see the world. I wanted to travel. I wanted to go all over the globe. So I embraced that model, research, rethink, remix. What's that mean? I went on YouTube and I looked at all of the top presentations, all of the top speakers around the globe, and I started to study how they held a crowd, what they did, how they spoke, et cetera. And I use that to inform my own approach so I could start to do it. Now, you might be thinking, I'll never be able to do public speaking. Here's a tip and an insight that a lot of people don't realize. When I was in high school, my nickname was Shy Ross because I didn't speak. I didn't talk. I didn't like people. I could never imagine raising my hand. When they ask you if you wanted to answer the question, I would like get down in my chair really low so the teacher wouldn't, they always still picked me. I don't know why, probably because they were those types of teachers. But they picked me even though I was getting low in my seat and I had to answer the question. And I would have like a tremor in my voice. Um, but I heard a thing that was like, if you want to do well in business, if you want to be able to travel the world, one of the best ways to do it is to be good at public speaking. So I signed up to speak at a local event. And I'll tell you, I made a big lesson at that point, and you will never see me make that mistake again. I wore a white shirt to this event, and I was so sweaty, you could see everything <laughs> after I got off stage. It was a sweaty mess. People came up to me, Ross, this is, you know, is so good, and I was like, you can see everything. This is so embarrassing. Let me go home. Like, this is not good. So if you are doing it for the first time, you're doing public speaking, you want to do it, pro tip, don't wear a white shirt. And if you are, wear a black shirt underneath. That was the other insight that I learned. But then you start sweating through the black shirt. Did that once too. And I was like, no, I'm done with this. I'm putting on a jacket. I'm going to wear something like this. And then you can't see it. Um, although you can see the face. Either way, I wanted to do public speaking. Today, I've spoke all over the globe. I've been to Romania, I've been all across Stockholm, Sweden, the US, I've had my entire family flown down to Disney three times, all on a company's dime. I've been able to do this because I embrace that model, research, rethink, remix. That is what you're able to do, right? You can go from being a sweaty mess at a local event to being able to speak on stage in front of thousands of people without fear while also getting a paycheck to do so if you embrace that idea of research, rethink, Remix. This can be applied to all aspects of life, folks. If you want to be healthier, you research what people do to be healthy, and then you try to rethink how you can apply it to your situation, your calendar, your life, and then you embrace it. If you want to be wealthy, you look at how did people get into those situations? Did they use technology? Did they use real estate? What was the path that most people took? You find your path, you find your goals, you find what you want to do with your career and your life, and you can research rethink and remix the other paths that other people take in to get there. You want to embrace this model. I have no idea why this picture of me and my sister are in my deck, but it is there. I don't know why, but what can I learn from this? Hmm, no idea. Research, rethink, remix. That's the model, folks. If you can embrace that, you truly can unlock an amazing results. Now, here's what I want to leave you with. A lot of people will say, okay, Ross, that's great. I feel inspired. I'm going to create a website. I'm going to write some content. Amazing. But the key is to ensure that that content is going to the right people. And a lot of times people don't know this, but you have to distribute and spread your content. That also means you have to spread your own name. You have to get your name out there. And oftentimes when you're fresher to school, you'll make the mistake of just adding everybody that you meet to LinkedIn. I wanna give you a quick tip on how to do that right. When you go on LinkedIn, if you're going to send somebody an invite to connect with them, 
Give them context on why you're doing it. Personalize it. Tell them, hey, I saw that you graduated from MSVU in year 2018. I'm so inspired by your career path and how fast you've been able to move up the career ladder. I would love to learn from you about what I should do in the first two years of my life, in the first two years of my career. By giving them context, you increase the likelihood of getting a response. If you just go in and just send them a request and then you say, hey, can you mentor me? You're gonna get blocked. Bye, Felicia, it's not gonna go well. So you wanna make sure that you are adding people with context and giving these types of discussions. And if you wanna stand out, go above and beyond. Record a quick video, send them that video and say, this is why I want a job with your company. This is why I wanna work with you. This is why I wanna be a part connected to you online. And if you're hearing all of this and you're like, Ross, when in the world do you find time to share content on Twitter, share content on LinkedIn, to run companies, et cetera? Here's another simple tip. There's a lot of tools that allow you to schedule content. Since I've been on this stage, I think I sent out two tweets, I think I put up an Instagram story and I shared one post on LinkedIn. I haven't touched my phone. How did I do it? There's tools like Buffer that allow you to schedule content in advance. Whoa, you came out of nowhere. But when you do that and you schedule content in advance, it gives you complete control over your calendar. I have a tweet scheduled for the year 2083 and it just says, I miss you all. It's gonna freak my kids out so bad because I'm gonna be gone, but they're gonna cry. <laughs> I hope this recording never meets them, but it's gonna be funny because the, it's not gonna be funny. It's gonna be morbid, but it's gonna be something. Either way, schedule your content in advance and makes your life a whole lot easier. Okay, so let's wrap this thing up. How should you folks leave this and how should you think about finding that Waldo moment? I wanna introduce you to the Simmons hierarchy of needs. Just came up with that. At the top, you have to ask yourself if you're going to get ROI, a return on your investment. If you are gonna put time or money into something, make sure you're gonna get something back from it. Then you have to ask yourself, is it within my circle of competence? What does that mean? Do I have the skills to do this thing? If you don't, then get the skills. You folks are young, you still have a ton of time to learn. Use this time to learn. It has never been a better time to learn. You have all of the information that you could need on the internet. What's the cost to create it? What's the cost time to create these things. Ask yourself if you have the available resources to do these things, and if you don't have the resources, start to scale back. Maybe you don't need to launch the next big Facebook, the next big million dollar business. Maybe you can start small and then start to go from there. Then start asking things like, what's the potential? What's the profitability? All of those types of things. Once you've done that, if you've said, okay, I've done a bunch of research, I know a bunch of different career paths I could take, a bunch of types of content that I could create, a bunch of types of YouTube channels I could run, a bunch of job opportunities. Do the things that have the least path of resistance. Do the things that are going to come easier for you. And if you still don't know what to do, after you've gone through that hierarchy, after you've embraced all of the ideas, you've researched, rethink, and remixed everything up to the, your eyeballs, and you're still feeling like, hmm, I don't know if I should chase this opportunity or this opportunity or this opportunity. Congratulations, that's it. You just found the adult version of the Scholastic Book Fair. And that is a great moment to be in. Thank you folks so much for having me. You've been great. Have a great night and a great evening.